There's a little bit of good news and a little bit of bad in the government's mid-year economic forecast. The deficit for this year has shrunk with an improved bottom line. It brings the headline figure down by $600 million to $36.5 billion. But it won't continue that way. Bigger deficits will make a comeback until 2020 when the government projects a return to surplus. Tonight, the ABC's political and financial experts look at what impact the budget will have on wages and the prospects for the economy. Let's go first to National Affairs correspondent Greg Jennett, who's in Canberra. Well, as it was in the beginning, so it is at the end of 2016. The federal finances are stuck deep in the red, on track for 12 continuous years of deficits. Now, Scott Morrison's likely to preside over a third of them, but he has managed one consolation. The current financial year is likely to look less worse in six months' time than it did only seven months ago. Well, Matthias, another my info. It's good to be able to bring it down today but we continue the... The trajectory. The trajectory is towards a surplus. All good. But the wait seems forever. Merry Christmas. And to you too. Merry Christmas. Especially for treasurers willing the day to come. Not long now. A few more sleeps. At least 1,500 sleeps lie between now and budget year 2021, with its promise of that slender surplus. The government's plan to restore the budget to balance remains on track. It's been seven months and an election campaign since the Treasurer's last set of budget numbers. His economic plan is to end this financial year in modestly better shape at $36.5 billion in deficit. We've been able to keep our commitment to keep the plan to get the budget back into balance on track. But what goes up can always come down. Deficits over the next three years actually dive deeper. Next year's blows out from $26 billion to $28 billion. And the forecasts in each of the next two years are $4 billion worse. More than $30 billion in revenues vanished over the last seven months. Growth's weaker and net government debt will peak at just under $360 billion in two years' time. We have continued to get expenditure under control and, in fact, reduced it. The cuts keep coming. The Green Army scrapped along with a $329 million wage subsidy scheme. $2 billion worth of unspent infrastructure monies being redirected and another $2 billion will be found by recovering welfare debts or removing wrongful payments. Even failure now has its financial rewards. The government's banking the $154 million it would have spent but can't on its same-sex marriage plebiscite. As for further savings, Scott Morrison's still counting on $13 billion worth, so-called zombie measures surviving through three years of suffocation by the Senate. Well, we're not going to support measures that we've opposed consistently since 2014, no. So the government points with pride to having passed two-thirds of its savings agenda since the election. But that was done with either Labor's support or the Greens, or through more complex deals with the Senate crossbench. Passing the remaining one-third, plus any extras it may need, is the tougher task of the next two and a half years. Greg Janet there in Canberra. Behind the numbers and away from the politics, workers and businesses face big hurdles, making the government's revenue-raising task more difficult. A bounce in commodity prices is driving hopes of an economic recovery. But as Philip Lasker reports, not everyone is ready to declare the good times are back. Chilean-born educator Patricia Rosas believes she's performing a vital role for her adopted country. It's for the future of Australia, you know. If we can work with these children now and make them ready to go to school, that's a big step. Despite her 25 years' experience, pay increases have been small since the GFC. Dollar by dollar by dollar by dollar, year by year by year by year. Yeah. And hopes of a better outcome in the future have disappeared. It's a circle. <laughs> Yeah, it's a circle. You can't, you just can't, you know, break it. The government is predicting otherwise. Wages growth, fundamental to the economy's fortunes and Canberra's tax take, is forecast to recover strongly from around 2 to 3.5% over four years. Wages uh, assumption of a return to 3.5% uh, growth to me seems highly optimistic and puts a big question mark on the forecast return to surplus. Stanmore Coal Chairman Neville Snedden will do his bit to boost the government's coffers after this year's unexpected surge in coal prices. If you stay in this industry long enough, you see everything at least twice. 
but much of the extra cash will be used to reduce debt, not invest or create jobs. People will be reluctant to do much, having been burned for the previous three or four years. This pile of coal is worth about $13 million. That's $6 million more than it was worth about a year ago. The state government gets its fair share relatively quickly through royalties. For the federal government, it's more complicated. Many mining companies are still claiming huge tax deductions on their boom time investing, reducing Canberra's tax take and a sustained recovery in commodity prices is far from certain. It's a very complex equation, that one, and I wish I knew the answer. But the overall trend is clear. The economy really has been held together by New South Wales and Victoria. They're really the growth engines nowadays, and the former growth engines in Queensland and Western Australia really are laggards. The tables have turned in the new two-speed economy. Philip Lasker, ABC News. Heading into today's announcement, analysts were almost positive Australia would lose its AAA credit rating, but the better-than-expected figures have saved it for now. Alan Kohler joins us from Melbourne. Alan, has the government dodged a bullet here? Oh, I think they have, Karina. I mean, Standard & Poor's in particular was itching to downgrade Australia. Moody's and Fitch, the other two ratings agencies, weren't uh, so... Um, determined to do so, but um, uh, Standard & Poor's weren't able to pick enough holes in today's statement, and in particular, they couldn't really fault the forecast enough. And the forecast that matters is wages growth. And that's because the government's strategy for getting back to surplus is mainly based on bracket creep, that is, increases in taxation, based on people increasing their wages and going into higher tax brackets. And so the wages growth forecast is the one that matters, and they've got the wages growth going up from the current really low level of 2% gradually to 3.5%. And basically Standard & Poor's had to say, well, that'll be OK, but we're really watching the May budget next year. So how then did the markets respond? Pretty relaxed. Um, the dollar actually fell quite a lot on Saturday, down to below 73. But then the fact that it didn't rise today, when the ratings agencies didn't downgrade Australia today, uh, means that they still think, the markets still think there'll be a downgrade next year, as there probably will be. The share market was pretty relaxed. It was up a bit, um, following on from a similar rise in uh, New York on Friday, and, and commodity prices were also up a bit as well. So all pretty, uh, pretty non-event.